anything else, but I, I want to bring to your attention tonight. Can everybody pretty well see that up there? And, uh, but remember the line that Rick drew? Remember? Okay, well, up here, right up there, it's like a cross, isn't it? See, we've got a cross there. So once we accept Christ, we become a child of God. Many scriptures in the Bible, as many as received him, God gave them the power, the authority to be sons of God. So when we receive Christ, we're born again. Our inner man, our spirit man is born again. We are new creations. But how many of you know we still have the same bodies? And one day, we're going to have a resurrected body, and these aches and pains will be no more. So just remember that. But once we are saved, that becomes our position in Christ. We are righteous, we are holy, and I don't have time to go into all the uh, scriptures tonight because we've been doing that in the past, but I have all the scriptures written down that now that we have been born again by the Spirit of God, and by the incorruptible seed of the Word of God, God did it. Jesus said, you must be born again. And we have been born again by the Spirit of God. And that's in, of course, St. John chapter 3, <clears throat> verse uh, 14 and 15, I think it is. So remember, this is our position. It never moves. If you say a bad word, you're still saved. If you think a bad thought, you're still saved. That position does not move. Now, let's just say, I'll use myself as an example. <coughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> uh, I might get myself into trouble. Let's say I willfully sin, okay, and I don't ask God to forgive me. Have I lost my salvation? No. What have I lost? My fellowship with God. Is that not true? Let's say you and me, something happens between you and me, and we fall out and tell each other what we, we think, <laughs> in a bad way, of course. Are you lost? No. Am I lost? No. Do we have fellowship? No. How can we get fellowship? By coming to one another and say, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? And we forgive one another, then what? We should have fellowship with one another. Do we understand that? That's very important. All right. So, <coughs> our salvation is fixed. We have eternal life. He that has the Son has eternal life. These things have been written that you might know that you have eternal life. Okay? Now, down here we have, the, we have our mind, we have our our will, our emotions, and our soul. From 1 to 10. How many of you know, even though you're saved, one morning you might get up and you just might just be mad at the world. And you just come right down here, let's just say you come all the way down to 7. And you're just mad at the husband, your wife, you're mad at everybody. In fact, you look in the mirror and you're mad at yourself. Has your salvation changed? No. Your emotions feel... That anger, let's say you're angry about yourself, and you don't even know why, but you're angry about yourself. Has your salvation changed? No. But <clears throat> the thing is, the devil comes and makes us think, boy, we have really done it now. Do you think God could love somebody like you? And your emotions are down here at number seven or number eight, way down. No, nothing has changed. How many of you know you can be up one day and down the next? Has anybody ever experienced that besides me? You have experienced that. Good. All right. But was you lost? No. You were still saved. Okay? <clears throat> so we fluctuate down here. Uh, our emotions, remember this, our emotions can be good friends when they're up. But when they're down, they can be enemies to make you feel rotten. Is that not true? 
It doesn't mean that God doesn't love you because you feel down one day. How many has ever felt great? You were up there number one. You get a phone call. I owe how much? <laughs> 10000 to who? <laughs> Click. <laughs> how many of you know the whole day is rotten, huh? The whole day is rotten. And that evening the phone rings and says, uh, uh, Mike, I called you this morning. Uh, we made a mistake. You don't owe us nothing. We owe you 10000 <laughs> The thermometer goes up. <laughs> you, see, you have to learn to realize that we are emotional creatures. Okay? Now, all of that bad stuff that we experience up and down, up and down, one day that'll be all clear when we get our resurrected body. I'll have hair on my head. And everybody will love me more, I'm sure, with hair on my head. But we get our resurrected body. We won't have some, that, this up and down bit. Now, here's where the maturity comes in our life. As we get into the Word of God and we understand what makes us click, what makes us tick, what makes you tick. Have you ever thought about that? Have you actually ever sit down and, and thought about why am I angry? Why do I act this way? Why do I react this way? Now, now, we're not scolding nobody. Forget about the scolding. We're here to learn. Just be honest with yourself. Why do I get mad every time my wife burns my toast? I said that one day about this, uh, and I told you this before, but the wife burnt the toast for 20 years. And one day the man couldn't stand it no more, and he got up, took the toast, and threw it at his wife, said, I've had it with burnt toast. And she said, we've been married 20 years. I thought you loved burnt toast. You never communicated with me. Is that not true? Communication is important, but aren't we scared to communicate? Huh? How many has ever tried to communicate and it's like, why did I open this keg of worms? <laughs> All right, so you need to understand, one day you may get up, you may be down here to 10. One day you may get up, but you're still saved. Your name is still written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You're still holy. You're still justified. God still loves you. He has not fallen off the throne. You may get up and you, and you say, well, did I sin? No. You cross out, I haven't sinned. I just feel bad. I got a headache. Anybody ever had a headache? Yeah. Well, your salvation, you're still righteous. You just got a, you just got a righteous headache. Uh, and, I, and I'm working on this because you need to nail that down in your life. Nothing has changed, okay? All right. So, how many of you know that when we're saved, our minds are full of, should I say, what would be a good word to say that our mind is full of? Carnality, uh, junk. Is that not true? When you get saved, your mind has got to be what? renewed how are you how are we going to be transformed somebody tell me by the renewing of our mind how do we get our mind renewed by getting into the word of god and thinking and believing and trusting what the word says about us now that we're saints how many of you know <clears throat> we were sinners but what are we now what are we now saints, saints. The Bible is written to saints, not sinners, but it talks about sinners. Now, we've got to rightly divide the word into it. How many have heard this scripture? All have sinned and come to short of the glory of God. You know, we've heard that so much. But that's not the way God sees you now. He sees you holy. Now, how many of you know 
that our actions sometimes are not always holy. How many of you understand that? Our reaction sometimes is not always holy, but we are holy because God has made us holy. Many scriptures on that, and I don't have time to go into it. All right. So what we want to do is so much is locked up in our souls and our minds and our wills. There's so much negative stuff up there that, that we've got to get our minds reprogrammed because our unrenewed mind has damaged our emotions, has damaged many parts of our, our being, and we have to get healing in that area. So this is about inner healing. And let's go over it real quick. I, we've already gone over some of this, but I want to get in on the healing uh, part of it. Okay, are we ready? Number one. This is one of the most vital and important area of deliverance ministry that we cannot overlook. While it is important to cast out demons, let me say that everybody don't have a demon. The demon can be in the atmosphere affecting your mind. How many have ever heard of fiery darts? <coughs> he shoots fiery darts in our minds. Have you ever stopped and said, why am I thinking this way? Why am I thinking negative? Well, the enemy's put a fiery dart in your mind and you start thinking on it, and he's going to Florida, laying on the beach, getting a suntan, and you've got this thought in your mind going over and over and over that nobody loves you, and that affects your attitude about yourself, it affects your emotions, and your lifestyle. Thoughts produce what? What does thoughts produce? Attitude. Yeah, I got it up here. That's good. <laughs> attitude. <laughs> Attitudes. And, and your attitudes produce your emotions and behavior and lifestyle. Now, we're saved, but we don't get our minds renewed right away. And so what we do, instead of right away getting our minds renewed by the Word of God, we still walk with the old attitudes and the old thinking, which does us much damage, which opens the door to the enemy to afflict us. Okay? Now, uh, I need to probably say that again. <clears throat> so th this is an absolute law. Thought. you got to think it first. That piece of pie you got in the refrigerator is not going to come out of that refrigerator until you first do what? Think. Pie in refrigerator. Attitude. Boy, I know I had two pieces at dinner, but I could... That, that last piece, I better get it before Susan gets it. So your attitude begins to think of that pie. You're going to go after what you think. Your body is going to go after what you think. You think about that pie, and you're going to get up, and you are already full. And you're going to open that refrigerator. That refrigerator does not open by itself. You're sitting on the couch, and that thing hits your mind, and you're the one that's opening that. That pie is innocent. It don't want to be eaten. It wants to stay in the refrigerator for Pastor Bob, but you're going to get it before Pastor Bob gets it. <laughs> See, the attitude is formed. Now, now your emotion is really, yeah, man, let's get it, man. It's backing you up, see? And you eat the thing. Now the merry go around. The enemy says to you, you thought you were saved. Look at you. You finished that piece of pie, and you knew your husband wanted it. You knew. How many's ever done it? Let's see your hands. 100%. I know you don't raise your hand. You know, <laughs> I'm not going that way. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it, was, it was good, but I don't want to go that way. All right, let's move it real quick. Like, it, <clears throat> it is just as important, if not more important, to minister the, to the emotional wounds. Emotional wounds are one of the most common reasons that deliverance can fail or demons seem to keep coming back and gaining uh, inhabitation within the person or around the person. I need to make it clear that you are going to be in the deliverance ministry. It is absolutely necessary that you learn about emotional wounds and how to bring the person to the point where they can receive inner healing from the Holy Spirit. Now, how many in here, and we all might have fit this, 
this prescription here. From 1 to 10, are you a negative person or a positive person? See, we need to uh, weigh, the, weigh ourselves out. Where, where are we here? Where are you? Hmm? Flux, how many fluctuate? One day I'm positive, one day I'm negative. I come to church, I'm positive. I go home, I, I listen to my husband, and I become negative again. <laughs> That's true. Is that not true? Bad company corrupts good morals. <laughs> if somebody comes up and starts talking a negative to me, I might like him, and, I'm, I, and I do love him. I love everybody. But you'll see me doing like this. Well, I'll see you later. <laughs> And just think, i got to hear your woes as a pastor. But, you know, I let people tell their woes because I know the answer already. <laughs> you got to forgive. Is that not true? Everybody look at me. The bottom answer, what is it? you got to forgive. But you don't know what they did to me. I don't need to know. I know what Jesus said. Now, what happens, see, if we don't forgive, then we wound ourselves. And how, this is how we get these wounds. The devil comes along and he just gives you down the country and bruises you to no end. And you're getting bruised because you just won't forgive. Sometimes it's hard to forgive, isn't it? You know, it's really hard. Boy, you realize all the 54 years I've been helping people, the stories I have heard and helped people to forgive and, to, and help them to get healed from that wound, okay? But you've got to forgive. You can chew it all you want to, but the bottom line is forgive. Bless, bless. Put the scripture, uh, 1 Peter 3, 9, I think it is. 1 Peter 3, 9 up there. All right, while well, he's finding that. All right, let's look at our, our deal. I've, all right, identify emotional wounds. How many of you know you've got to find the cause of the problem? We deal mostly with the effects. But what, if you, can deal, if you deal with the effect, if you don't deal with the cause then you're going to have the same thing over and over and over again. Is that not true? Find out what the cause. Back here, this air condition, this thing's putting out. <laughs> Mighty good cold air now. I'm going to stand over here. Man, making me horse up. But he found out the cause. Rick found out the cause, and he fixed it. And now it's putting out a lot of good cold air. The effects was it was getting hot in this church building. He found out the cause. That air conditioner wasn't putting out like it was, and he found the cause and fixed it, and now it's working. So in your life, everybody say, I want truth. I mean, be strong in that. I want truth. If you see anything in my life, you should be so secure in God, and I can say it to every one of you, if you see something in my life, that's not right. Let me know. Let me know. If some of you notice I'm not trying to be humorous as much. <laughs> I'm very humorous, as much, you know, and I'm, I'm working on that. <coughs> You'd be surprised the things I've had to cast down up here, I wanted to say. <laughs> All right, here we go. <coughs> Never return evil for evil or insult for insult. Scolding, tongue lashing, be, be braiding, but on the contrary, blessings. All right, why not? Why not? If somebody does you evil, why not do evil back to them? Shoot first and ask questions later, right? <laughs> because you reap what you sow, number one. <coughs> you sow evil, what are you going to get back? <coughs> evil. Somewhere down the line, it's coming back to you. You plant corn, what do you get? You plant cabbage, what do you get? 
you plant hatred, malice, envy, you strike back, you're going to get it somewhere down the line. It's not that God's a mean God. That's just a principle. See, everything is, comes into existence because of that. Do we understand that? Where did you come from? Where did you come from? A seed. You ca See, I came from a seed. Y'all didn't know that? You didn't tell them the birds and the bees about the birds and the bees? <laughs> Where y'all been all your life, you know? A seed. Where did Jesus come from? Y'all not out there somewhere. I know you're out there. A seed. The seed of the woman shall bruise what? The head of the serpent. But women don't have seeds. They have eggs. So where did the seed come from? God the Father. Come on now. We've taught that before. Your mama, your mama didn't have no seed. But your daddy was on the ball. That's why you're here. All right. So don't fuss at your mama. Fuss at your daddy because you're here. Oh, now, we're all grown up. So, I mean, that's simple. It's not complicated. It's not, uh, uh, it's not vulgar. It's just facts of life. You need, we need to know that. So, everything comes from a seed. The Word of God is a seed. We're born again by the seed of the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, remember that. So the seed of the Word, and the Holy Spirit waters it, fertilizes it, and we're born again. Simple, not complicated. Do you know where that pine tree out there came from? Somebody tell me. A seed. A little acorn. You see that big oak back here? A little seed. Gee, one day we'll be like that back there. We all start out with a little seed, and we grow. We grow. We mature. Along the way, along the journey, we grow and mature as we drink of the Word and drink of the Spirit. Okay, now, so what, how, do, how do we get bruised? How do we get hurt? I tell people, I can bring you into healing, but i got to get people lined up, husbands and wives, that got to quit bruising one another. And how do we bruise one another? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Have you ever said anything that hurt somebody? Raise your hand if you have. Boy, it gives you a great satisfaction, don't it? But you've bruised a person. How many kids are being bruised a day by just their parents don't know how to speak to their kids? They got feelings. They got emotions. All right, let's get moving. This, oh, my goodness. Time. Okay, all right, are we ready? So identify the emotional wound. The first thing we need to do is identify the problem. Me and my big mouth. How many has ever said that? Huh? <laughs> Me and my big mouth. Why did I say that? I'm sorry, Lord, I'm sorry. But you see, once you say it, you can't take it. It's already gone out, and it's, it, it's bruised the person. Now, I want to say something. When some people come to the Lord, they don't have a lot of bruises, and they just move along real good and mature. And, you know, some of us, I had, Susan didn't have a, a whole lot of bruises. I was loaded with bruises. I was loaded with hurts. But Susan wasn't. So some people come to the Lord, and they're saved, and they just move right along and grow and mature and develop and move right along in God without really a lot of these bruises. But certain people are bruised very badly. They have a lot of anger, hurts, wounds, and so forth. Okay. So, and realize the need for inner healing. Below is a common list of common uh, symptoms to look for in somebody who has an emotional wound. <coughs> As a pastor... I've had people speak to me in deep anger. But God had done a work in me, healed me up, and I knew what the problem was. That was manifesting. But it was, why, was the, why would the person 
lash out with anger. Has anybody ever lashed out in anger? Why'd you do it? Hmm? Not fussing, but there's probably a deep hurt there. I remember my aunt one time, and uh, we had a family reunion. This was, this was way back in the 40s, before many of you were even born. You were born when you might. But, oh yeah, okay. One person. Everything was fine. I mean, I mean, the atmosphere was wonderful. Everybody was fine. And one of her kids began to act up. And somebody in the family called one of her kids stupid. And boy, that hit my aunt. And she jumped right up, and boy, she nailed that. Don't you call my kid any names. I mean, she lit on that person left and right. Who can diagnose that case for me? Anybody? Hmm? Yeah, I know it's simple. Huh? Somewhere down the line in the back of her life, she was probably treated the same way, and it made her angry. And, it, and it, it boiled up inside and bruised her and hurt her and wounded her. And when the, that person said that about her kid, it set her on fire and she reacted to that instantly. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all been around a long time. Well, not as long as I have, but you've been, I can tell. I can tell. Now, now, let's just see that continues on in your life. You need to deal with the cause. Rewind the tape back to somewhere in your life. The Holy Spirit will show you that when that bruise hits you, you just sucked it in and it bruised you inside and you got angry and you stuck it down. You didn't know how to handle it. You, you follow me? Okay. All right. So those bruises, and then you have about 30 years of those things you packing down in there and then you decide to get married. Then you decide to get a divorce <laughs> shortly afterwards. <laughs> Come on, love me at church. You know, uh, we're all in this pot together. Okay. All right, let's move on real quick. So, inner, inner rawness. In other words, you ever have there's a, often a sense of inner rawness and a hurt that doesn't seem to go away? Irritability. Now, a lot of this can just come from the flesh. Uncrucified flesh can produce many of these things. <clears throat> it's easy to become irritable with others even if they aren't doing anything wrong. Grrr. Feeling always, feelings are always rising up in you. Your spirit should be just as light, fluffy, feeling good just all the time if you're really healed. Now, believe me, there was about four or five years that God had to do a lot of work in me to heal me inwardly that he might do something through me. Do you see that? Let me tell you how uh, sensitive this is, and I know we're not getting very far. We had a person come one time, and it was stored up in her her. One of her parents had died, and it hurt her so deeply that her parents would leave her through death. Parent didn't have anything to do, couldn't help it. And that was stacked up into her, and when we prayed for her, the Holy Spirit flushed that to the surface, and she had to forgive her parents for leaving her. I know it's strange to some of you, but this, this is what is boiling deep down into people. I know of, of uh, two daughters or two, two sons, it can be. Sometimes you have to spend more money on one kid than you do on the other kid. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Because of their particular needs or maybe their age. We had to explain that to our two youngest daughters 
that the reason we're doing this for their older sister, because she's a teenager, and you guys are just 10 and 11 years old. And so she needs certain things at her age, and we have to spend money on her this way. And they think, well, why don't you spend it on me? Well, when you get that age, we will. But if the kids don't understand it, they can get resentment in their heart towards dad, mom, and even the oldest sister. Are you out there? See, you've got to see these things. through. And so those hurts are in those younger kids. And that just goes on, uh, on and on, which I don't have time to, to, to show you how the end of that works if you don't deal with it. All right, let's move real quick. Little or no tolerance. There is a low tolerance issue with others where you expect and demand from them. And if they don't deliver, you get mad or we get mad real quick. All right, I said, a feeling always rising up. No, where this feeling of anger or hate or resentment seems to rise up within you at the slightest offense of others. Did you hear about the woman that went to the ball uh, football game? There was thousands of people all around in this stadium. And she came to this ball uh, game uh, with a couple of friends. And the, and the football players were out there in a huddle. You ever seen them in a huddle? And she was so parano paranoid that she said, look, they're talking about me. <laughs> Let's sink in. Imagining. Come on now, we've all had some degree of imagining. I went to church and the pastor didn't even speak to me. Hmm. Do you realize all the things that are in my mind? I'm trying to remember. I got all these scriptures and I got to remember what I'm going to preach. And blah, 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 blah. Huh? Y'all don't understand that? I mean, I want to take you in my arms and rock you, sing to you. I mean, I don't mind. I'll get my rocking chair. Come on now. Sit on my lap. I'll rock you. Rock of ages, clear for me. But you understand what I'm talking about. And if you're ahead of something and you're trying to keep it all straight, there's a lot you've got to think of. So we just need to relax. God loves you. God loves me. We love one another. If I don't speak to you, I really want to. But you know me, other people sometimes need what? More attention like my oldest daughter and my other two young ones because she was older and she needed, you follow me? Okay. Oversensitive about an event in your past. If there are, are events in your past which cause you to become very sensitive or anger or even cause you, turn the page real quick, we've got to move real fast, to lash out, then it is, likely revealing a deep emotional wound tied in with that event or memory. How many has ever been in school? How many of you know there's an issue called bullying? How many understands that in the schools today, even back when I was going to school, it was bullying? One person, for some reason, and the bullies would always pick on one person. Do a lot of damage. Do you think maybe you went through school and every grade you went in, they were bullying you when you graduated? How many hurts do you think you would have right now? Why would, are you acting and reacting the way you do when somebody or you sort of think they may be bullying you now that you're older? <laughs> I ain't taking it no more, and they get in a fight. Why did you fight Jimmy? Well, he was bullying me. Let's rewind the tape all the way back to the first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade. For some reason, they always picked on Jimmy. And then Jimmy grows into a man one day. 
He takes up boxing and wrestling, gets in shape, and then somebody comes along, and they think they're going to bully him, and you call 911, and they take him away in the, to the hospital. The other guy, Jimmy, stands there, exploded with all that anger. He nailed that guy, boom, knocked him out. He's out cold. The burnt toast issue. Throw the toast. I said that one time, and that one guy was sitting there, and he said, no toast. See if you can figure that one out. No toast. <laughs> he didn't get no toast. Burnt toast, brown toast, no toast. Okay. <laughs> All right, church. All right, let's move on real quick because, uh, man, the time. I've got 20 more minutes, and so you've got to be out here. Let's go to, um, all right, let's go to four. Let's go to four. And you can read this. You can take it home and read it. Mark it up. All right, hostility towards God. Page four. Are you there? Real quick, like hostility towards God, self and others. You know, sometimes you can be more harder on yourself. Now, be honest. How many in here feels like that you've, you have been harder on, too hard on yourself? Look, yeah. Oh, well, look at the hands. Myself, too. I'm my worst enemy. I beat myself up. I don't need you in that respect to beat me up. <laughs> How many beat themselves up sometimes? I knew better than that. What did I do? I did that last week. And you beat yourself up. All right. Because of bound up emotions. How much bound up emotions or hurts do we have? A person can tend to feel hostile towards God, and I've dealt with people like that, other people in their life, or even themselves. Why do you think people commit suicide? Did you know that's a big issue today in our society? Many of our troops coming back from arm's way are killing themselves. Okay, I've dealt with people and worked with them, and they ended up killing themselves. Not because I worked with them, because they didn't obey what I told them to do. Boy, that gets you. But how many doctors have patients that die too? All right, look at this. <clears throat> Other people in their life or even themselves. This is usually rooted in the form of bitterness. That's page four. Pa why don't you look at that, pa uh, page four. I want you to make sure you look at it now. Seeing it with your eyes, that's page four. And I'm right there. <coughs> you, you got that, page four? Oh, you don't have? I'm in the next one, and I've got it. Yeah, right there. I know I've got some more back there on my desk. You got four of them back there? Oh, you got two, two of them. I'm healed. <laughs> all right, number four. See, I wanted him to look at that because all of us need to look at it. Uh, let me say this. I'm not just teaching this for, for us to get our healing. That's, that's number one. That's true. But we are the body of Christ. Remember Charles preached about the body of Christ. Every one of us should reach out. we got people. You probably know people. But once you get your healing, then you understand what they're going through, and you can be an instrument in God's hands. That's my desire, to make disciples, to equip the saints, to reach out and touch people. And right here, you'll find it. If you start talking with people, if they open up to you, you're going to find all of this in their lives. Okay? All right, let's move on real quick. Like I said that before, didn't I? Because of bound up emotions, a person can tend to feel hostile towards God, other people, in their lives. This is usually rooted in a form of bitterness. How many of you know the Bible says, see to it that no one, no bitterness springs up in a person's life? Because we know that unforgiveness and they, they get hurt and unforgiveness and then all this goes right into bitterness and boy that's bad stuff when you go into bitterness rooted in a form of bitterness against God 
for not preventing something from happening to you. How many people are mad at God today because they think God should have not allowed that to happen in their life? God, why did you allow that? We only know in part. We only prophesy in part. We don't know everything down here. But I know this, God's a good God. And he's for us and he's not against us. And you always remember that. We might not understand why certain things happen sometimes. Bad things happen to good people. But see, when you, can see the, when you can see the end of the trail, when you can see eternity, when you can see the inheritance that's laid up for us in heaven and kept for us where no corruption or nothing can get to it, it's kept for us up there in a safe place. And we will still come into our inheritance. So regardless of what happens down here, everything down here is temporary. Everything. And I can tell you, when you go and leave this earth, how much you're going to take with you and how much you're going to leave. You're going to leave all of it. But you're going to a better place with a great inheritance, and that's in the Word of God. All right, here we go. Not preventing something from happening to you, bitterness against somebody who has wronged or harmed you emotionally, or bitterness against yourself for failure that you've fallen into yourself. <clears throat> Let me share something with you. Some people will never get delivered. So everybody look at me. If you orbit around yourself, you're a goner. How many understands that? Do I need to talk about that a little bit? We've all, I've, oh man, I used to. I, me, and myself. Everything is measured how it affects me. Somebody love me. <laughs> huh? I'm so glad me died with Christ. <laughs> That's why I like that. I died with Christ, so did you. If you're in God's care, when the end of the road comes and your faith is still intact in Him, you win. Everything God has promised, you will get. We're only down here, what? I'm 80, so I've been, my, my time's run out. I'm on a borrowed time. But I feel great. I got the joy in my soul. I know I'm 80, but it doesn't, I don't know, that's just a, what is that, just a number. But my spirit is robust, strong, healed at last, free at last. I don't have no sins on me. I've been made righteous by a righteous God. Let me say this while I'm thinking about it. The time goes by so quick. Our sins have been forgiven us not just to get the guilt and the condemnation off of us and that that sin will not destroy us, but that we can come into the presence of a holy God. Did you get that? He made you holy where you can go into the throne room of God boldly with confidence as a holy person. Yes, praise God, our sins are forgiven. Every one of them, forgotten, forgiven, have no sins on me. Oh, if I do sin, I know what i got to do. Somebody give me the scripture. First John 1, 9. Put it on the board. First John 1, 9. We'll come back to this one. If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful to just and true to his own nature and promise, and will forgive our sins, dismiss our lawlessness, and continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness and everything in conformity to his will, in purpose, thought, and action. Woo! Glory to God. So now you're back, and you've got that fellowship with God again. So I want you to nail that down. Not only 
was our sins forgiven that we might ex- get rid of the guilt and the condemnation and be born again, but that we might come into the presence of a holy God. Now, remember in the Old Testament, they couldn't do that. Only the high priest once a year went into the Holy of Holiness one time a year for his own sins and for the sins of the people. But we, even though, and we are priests, the Bible says we are priests and kings, we can go into the very presence of God 24-7. Now you think about that. And the Bible says we can come with confidence. Why? Because all my sins have been washed away. All your sins have been washed away. They're not covered. In the Old Testament, their sins were just covered. Now, I've got a question. If God has cleansed you from all sin, what sin do you have? And yet, we'll, we'll go to before the Lord, the night's over, we'll, get, we'll nail it to bed, here's what we'll do. Lord, forgive me of all my sins, Lord. And he says, what sin? Now, here's what we ought to pray. Father, I thank you that you have already cleansed me from all sin. I thank you that I can come into the very presence of God. I thank you I can come with confidence. I thank you, Father, that all guilt and condemnation has been removed from me, and I'm a child of God, and my name is written in the last book of life. And, Lord, I've been justified by your grace and your mercy. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that we walk daily together, and we have a great time together, and we're going to do some plowing tomorrow together. And I just thank you that we can work in the garden to get together. Lord, this is wonderful. Did you know when God began to grow me up a little bit, I had to learn to pray all over again? I used to, I used to uh, say, Lord, bless my children. Well, wait a minute, he's already blessed them. Here's what I say now. Lord, you have blessed them with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Thank you, Lord. I thank you. You have blessed this congregation with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. You have cleansed their slate. You have made them pure. You have justified them. You have brought them into your presence, and they can worship you without guilt and condemnation. They can do your will because they love you. Hello? You're going to have to learn to pray all over again. Somebody love me just a little bit. Thank you. Appreciate it. Time's running out almost. Okay, let's move real quick. All right, now, if you have something in your life that keeps coming back and you need to deal with it, how many of you know if you've got termites in your house? (coughs) It's it's just a couple of them. (laughs) Don't worry about it. How many of you know about three years from then and one day you'll be walking across, you'll be walking, you'll probably be in there dancing, praising God, you know, and you fall through the floor. And you're on a two-story apartment, and you end up downstairs in their living room. You got termites? How many of you got to deal with them? Oh, they'll go away. You got to deal with them. Simple, not complicated. That's just the way it is. And once you deal with it, you can be happy. I have no axe to grind. I have nothing. I've had people tell me to go to A-G-L-L as a pastor. I've had them take half my congregation away through rebellion. I've had so many things happen to me. But you know what? They're dead. I'm alive. And I'm free. Because I did not render evil for evil. Put that back on the board. 1 Peter 3, 9. So you know what to do. 1 John 1, 9. All right. What's the other one? We've got five minutes. We'll be out of here. I got that one piece of pie at the house I got to take care of. (laughs) Get out of my mind. (laughs) All right, here we go. Never return evil for evil or insult for insult. Scolding, tongue, how many of you, you are putting wounds on people when you talk like that. Or if we, I know none of you guys would do that. But people, have you ever been around somebody who will lack but give you down the country? I mean, they'll put a licking on you in a minute. Is anybody out there like that? Any, any of you guys like that? Has anybody ever? Has anybody here really give anybody a good tongue lashing besides me? I get a hundred percent. Yeah. 
and I've repented of it, and I don't do that no more. All right, look what it says. But on the contrary, blessings, blessings. If somebody runs in front of you, and you're driving your car, and they cut you off, if you've got any of the flesh in you still alive, and you've got some emotions in there that's been stamped down, the chances are you probably, of course, you don't curse, but you'll probably give them a good tongue lashing, and they don't even hear. They don't even hear you. But doesn't it make you feel good? I told them, boy, I told them real good. I tell you, I did. <laughs> I had a deer run in front of Susan and me uh, this morning or yesterday, a buck. Man, whoop, run across. And I blessed that deer. And he turned around and looked at me and blessed me. I said, thank you. <laughs> All right. Now, pr praying for their welfare. Somebody curse you out and you pray for their welfare. Why? Why? You reap what you sow. See, it's so simple. If you plant okra, you get what? You plant corn and you get squash, right? <laughs> no, you don't. You get plant squash, you get squash. You squash somebody, you get squash. <laughs> All right, that's that's just a principle. God's whole creation is made like that. But on the contrary, blessings, praying for their welfare, happiness, and protection, and truly pitying and loving them. See, you can do it once you get healed up. But until you get healed up, you're going to come up swinging. So you want to fight, eh? Come on. You want a little piece of me? Come on. Is that not true? Just a minute. Let me get my stick. I'll be right back. <coughs> and of course, we're all down at the hospital. We come down to see you. I didn't know he was a golden glove <laughs> boxer. See, I say that because I met somebody's fist one time. But I tell you, I messed his fist up real good. I, really, I was 16 years old. I mean, you should have seen his fist. I lost those two teeth right there. And every once in a while, I really believe, I feel that gnawing right back in there. I think they're back there somewhere. I never found those two teeth. I went home. I had blood all, all over me. My two teeth were gone. My sister saw me. Where's he at? I'm going to go beat him up with good. She's going to go to school and beat that guy up. I said, honey, I messed his fist up, but good. He'll never be able to hit anybody again. Anyway, but I learned something. Always stand a good distance. <laughs> Well, you don't have time to spin around and run. <laughs> don't just get right in their face. Boom. <laughs> All right, church, behave yourself. All right. For, for know that to this you have been called. You have been called to do what? To bless. Everybody say bless. All right. Next time the boss comes in there, chews you out, just bless him. After you hit him. I mean, bless him. No, 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 I'm just kidding. But, you know, see, that, that you know, you, but you, you bless. You bl see, how many of you know vengeance is mine? Don't, don't, don't you think, I know God can take care of everything. It may look cloudy right now. But God will take care of his children. You're faithful to God, God's faithful to us. He's faithful. All right, look what it says. For know that to this you have been called, that you may yourself inherit a blessing. From God, from God. That you may attain a blessing as heirs, bring in welfare and happiness and protection to your own self. Run out of time. I just got started. I'm sorry. But let's go next week. We'll go with this again. And we'll start right there. Be honest with yourself. We already did that, didn't we? 
And we'll start there. You can take it home and read it, study it.